What's a D2? Capital G here. D and dual commentary. All right, we've got J at the top, 1658 versus BLS 95, 1743. This looks like Prophecy versus um, Sylvan, Sylvan Learning Center and all that good stuff. All right, so I know that huh, Blue Boy gets popped. <laughs> I think he has Soul Charge and he, he just wants to get rid of Blue Boy. But anyways, so it looks like um, J opened with Magician, which got him the typical... Secrets, then master, master, co master copy secrets that gets you spellbook of um, fate and whatever BLS summoned. This probably was a monster that threatened the uh, the spellbook magician of prophecy, and it probably was slipped face down. I mean, it could have been a lone fire blossom hypothetically. So it looks like he activates eternity, and I believe that got him secrets, which he's gonna get. Uh, he's gonna use secrets to get magician. And then from Magician, he can just, I guess, copy it with Master. He can just search Master and copy copy it. Okay, never mind. We see Breakthrough Skills played, unless he has Spellbook of Wisdom. He has a bunch of cards, and he does have Spellbook of Wisdom. So, I actually secretly believe that Prophecy is, like, the second or third best deck of the format. Like, it's, it's so hard to stop. Like, especially Game 1, Prophecy is, like, up there with Infernity as far as just, like... I, I don't know. I feel like Infernity is even easier to beat because your back row beats Infernity inherently. There's not really a lot of back row to beat Spellbook of Fate or to beat, you know, like Prophecy Magician and shit like that. Like the back row traditionally that people run is just not super effective against Prophecy. All right, so this probably is a Lone Fire Blossom. I'm just guessing. And it is a Lone Fire Blossom. I didn't even know what it was, but it just seemed like uh, Lone Fire Blossom was a good guess. Alright, so you see that Jay, he runs over Lone, Lone Fire Blossom, which means that power is going to trigger, and he gets the tower. I imagine he's going to play it. Wh huh, he didn't play it. Maybe he thinks that his opponent has a Sylvania in hand? I don't know. But he has another Lone Fire Blossom. For BLS to get back in this duel, um, I would say Soul Charge would help a lot, but I would say more than anything, he needs to get the Hermitry. Hermitry needs to uh, hit deck. Hermitry needs to mill a plant so he can draw one. And then if his plant that he milled was like Kurashumo, that would help him a lot because he would go plus two. And he'd be able to run this bitch over in battle. So technically that's plus three, right? <laughs> that, would, that would be the ideal situation. So it looks like he's going to play his, or he played Terraforming, which was set, for Mount Sylvania. Hmm. The interesting thing is, all right, so now he activates uh, Sliven Charity. Sylvan Charity. Sylvan Charity, not Sliven. <laughs> Sylvan Charity. I guess maybe he wanted to activate Terraforming because he didn't want there to be any possibility of him uh, hitting Mount uh, Sylvania. So, I don't know why... I don't know why Sylvania is in the graveyard. Did he Did he not hit any Sylvans? I see a Kareem Bandit, and that's cool. But you only have to reveal one, right? Okay, Sylvania is going to... Oh my god, he didn't hit any. Now, when that happens, generally I think you should just scoop. Okay, we see a blind MST used on Fetus Chain. Oh, and then he soul charges for Lone Fire Blossom, Lone Fire Blossom. And another Hermitry. Ah, this is a really good setup because not only he knows what's on top of his deck, but if he goes Lone Fire Blossom, he shuffles his deck, so he doesn't have to worry about getting uh he doesn't have to worry about excavating the bad cards. So I'd bring out a third Hermitry. Like I'd go Hermitry nuts here. I don't really care about this card right here. The uh the Prophecy Magician. For some reason I thought with Sylvania, I mean um uh I thought with um what's it called? With charity that if you didn't put um, a Sylvan on top, I thought that all the cards in your hand went back to the top. Maybe I'm wrong or something like that. I have to read the card again. But anyways, he did Soul Charge, and I mean, he just has a monster field right now. I think it's a hard debate between Infernity and Sylvans as to which deck goes harder with Soul Charge. I think that they both go a, a, just a tiny bit harder than... Um, I think they both go just a... a teeny tiny bit harder than mythic rulers all right so princess sprout comes out she hits um sage koya and then she puts herself back on top of the deck so hermitry is going to trigger hermitry number one and that hits uh princess sprout so he gets a free draw and then she hits deck and she's going to be what like level eight or something i mean i i would make her level eight because i'd want to definitely have um felgrin 
I mean, double Felgrin if possible. So, she hits deck, and I mean, remember, he has the other, oh, yeah, he can't, he can't, I'm lunching. For some reason, I was thinking that he could go for another Hermitry, but it's in the graveyard. Remember, he used it with, uh, with Blaster. So, you know what? She could actually go level 7, and he could summon Blaster, but, I mean, there's no rank 7 that actually does anything in the Prophecy. Like, Dracosac's not that great, in my opinion, against them, because Spellbook of Fate is just like, nope. So, um, I mean, I would do my best to make to make two Felgrands, because you should be drawing in this process, you know what I mean? He already hit Charity, so that helps. So, the second Hermitry should hit its effect, which means you're going to draw another card. So, he should have a bunch of cards in hand before this is even over, let alone the Felgrand that he already has the potential to make. So he activated um, Hermitry, and that one missed. That one hit Trap Stun. Okay, he makes a level 8, by the way. And he goes for Felgrand. I wonder what he's going to do with Lone Fire number 2. Alright, he's going to tribute it. I wonder, see, I don't know the 100% the makeup of the Sylvan deck. Like, I don't know if they could have, if he could have, like, Went for another Princess Sprout to guarantee that Hermitry number two hit. You know what I mean? All right, so he's banishing two. Ah, okay, smart, smart. That's what he's gonna do. He's gonna remove both Lone Fires, and then um, he's gonna use Spore that he got from Lone Fire number two to uh, synchro into a level eight synchro. Is there any level eight that pops something? Damn it! It sucks that he can't make Dark and Dragon. Right? <laughs> he can make Dark and Dragon pop this motherfucker. And then, what's it called? And then, um, go into a second rank 8. Alright, so now he has a level 8 Spore. And I guess he's not even going to use Scrap's effect. This is the craziest fucking thing ever, though. Like, the, the fact that people will have Spore tokens that, I mean, the fact that people bring Spore out and that motherfucker is a level 8. Like, that, that is unheard of. You know what I mean? And yet, I see it all the time. So, I wonder... What he's going to do if he'll go double Felgran. And he does go double Felgran. Plus with Scrap on board, that's pretty good. Um, didn't he start this all from one card? I mean, this is incredible. Alright, so I imagine he's going to use Scrap on one of the Felgrans and then the back row. You don't care about Magician at all. I think you're just trying to get rid of back rows. Um, potential cards, I can see this being. Uh, Reckless Greed. Um... Huh, I'm at a loss. Reckless Greed. Anything that was reactionary to, to summons, he would have already used. So, Reckless Greed. He needs to detach, by the way. And he does. He detaches Hermitry. Um, Reckless Greed. Spellbook of Wisdom. I can see it being Spellbook of Wisdom. It's Phoenix Chain. On Scrap Dragon. You know, I think I might let that ride. <laughs> I, think, I think I would let that ride, to be honest. Like, the fact that I, I, I'm, well, yeah, hmm, I don't know. I mean, he could, he could obviously turn his Scrap Dragon back on by using one of these effects. I think I'd let that ride. I, I'd rather keep my three negates and not care about Scrap Dragon. I mean, you're not going to, the damage, the 2800, yes, you can OTK your opponent through this little bitch right here. But I really don't think that's important. All right, this guy comes out. Obviously, I would detach Spore to negate. Or I would detach Hermitry because I got Blaster in Graveyard. And I want as many Fire Monsters in Graveyard as possible. So that would be my first order of business is uh, negating the second Magician. And I already know that you have Tower. So I'm going to count that sort of as a dead card because it's, it's not going to help you in... It's not going to help you in the... the what, what's, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, in the immediate future, you know what I mean? Like, especially, he has 56 on board, right? And then he could easily bring out Blaster. So, it's like, what are we doing here? All right, he activated Dark Hole. Wow, that was a good counter. So, one Felgrand is going to protect itself. The other Felgrand will die, and Scrap Dragon will die, too. That sucks. <clears throat> I mean, I, I, I guess that's what he was going to do. Actually... You could just have Felgrand number one protect Felgrand number two. That's what I would do. Yeah, the Felgrand that has Spore in it is what I would protect. All right, so he plays Grand Tower. He's still technically, he's still no, nah, they're they're actually even in terms of advantage, even though he can summon a Blaster. But 
I mean, the way BLS has kind of fought back is, I mean, something to be uh, admired. All right, so he activates Charity. He draws three, and with a card with a hand of five, you'd have to imagine that he has at least one uh, Sylvan in his hand that he can put on top of his deck that he can uh, properly resolve this card. I don't. I'm not crazy about that artwork on this card. Like it's just, you know, you got Sage Koya in the middle. I think there's Peacekeepers here. This is Marsha Leaf, Kurashumo. It's just a, it's like just a mess, man. All right, so you got Kurashumo that was put on top, and then Peacekeeper put on top of that. If he has a Flower Knight, okay, he has Marshall Leaf even better. Oh my God, <laughs> Marshall Leaf mills too, right? Okay, and that's the end of that. So um, that sucks. I, I really thought we were gonna get a full match there, but. Anyways, it looks like um, he knew that uh, he was going to get a monster, a plant monster that was going to be special summoned, and he was going to pop, uh, he was going to pop the the tower too, and Jay just had no way of coming back. Thank you guys for watching, as always.